You can be amazing, you can turn a phrase into a weapon or a drug. You can be the outcast or be the backlash. Background. Okay, so I moved here in um, first grade. Um, my family moved from Nevada, um, Las Vegas, Nevada. And, um, you know, I was, I was uh, kind of like the oddball out. I was the only new kid that year and uh, didn't really make any, any uh, friends. Kind of kind of lonely. Um, second grade, I made a good group of friends and I started like going to sleepovers and playing with kids at recess and stuff. And um, I would say that's probably when I started getting made fun of for my weight. I was kind of always an overweight child because I was a picky eater. So I would, I would like, you know, my family would go to Texas Roadhouse and I would bring in Burger King, you know, I was that kid. And so um, that's when I started getting made fun of a lot and it happened a lot through elementary school. Got made fun of a ton. Seventh grade a little bit. Eighth grade, people kind of grew out of that, kind of just more cared about themselves than others. But I definitely had, um, you know, bad thoughts about myself because of that. And to this day, it still affects a lot of my life and what I think about myself. And um, made junior high kind of hard. High school's been easier. High school's a lot more supportive. You know, people are a lot more caring in high school. And my high school career has been great. I love high school. <laughs> you know, people always talk about how scary high school is. I love it. But that's my background. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about what you struggled with? Um, my biggest struggle would in ninth grade, I um, was diagnosed with anorexia. Started at the beginning of ninth grade, I kind of, you know, I told my parents, I think I want to lose some weight, and I want to try to get healthier. And it started going good at first, lost a couple pounds, it was eating healthy, it was really good. And then it's almost like a drug, like you get, you lose some weight, and you're like, wow, that's awesome, I want to keep losing weight. And you keep losing weight. And then it becomes an addiction to where I got to the point where I was healthy, but I wanted to keep losing weight. I still saw myself as fat. You know? Looking back through pictures now, I can see what people were saying. with like, you're so skinny, you're so skinny, you're so small. But I just saw fat everywhere I looked at, you know. And so um, I struggled with that through all through ninth grade, all through 10th grade. 10th grade, I got to 110 pounds. And so in December of 10th grade, my parents finally, um, well, it was originally my sister, actually. She was like, uh, called my mom and was like, Alyssa is not healthy and stuff. And so my parents sat down and had to talk with me and they were like, you're not healthy, you know, 110 pounds and 5'8 is not healthy at all. And so I um, got put on a treatment plan. I got a therapist and a um, dietitian, And um, that went well for a little while and then I kind of, I guess you could call it like relapsed back into it and then I got down to 91 pounds and that's when my sister started calling me and I remember she called me on the phone and she was just bawling and she was like you know you're gonna die and I don't want to lose my sister to an eating disorder and so that's when I really was like okay I need to I need to take care of this and so I started eating and I started trying to work out less at that point I was dancing about three hours every night a week and I would go for runs after school. I'd tell my parents I was hanging out with friends and go for runs. I would do crunches in my room. I would do push-ups. Whatever I could do, whatever I felt like would make me lose more weight. So I tried to stop doing that stuff and just stick with dance because I was still a dance obviously. And, you know, it was, there was a couple other small relapses but eventually I, by the end of 10th grade, probably the summer of between 10th and 11th grade, I finally got back to where I was healthy and, and where I needed to be. And um, Yeah, that was my something big I had to overcome, you know, mm -hmm. my struggle, I would say. So what kind of situations did you find yourself in that played into the anorexia and the mental struggle? Um, definitely dance. Um, I was in the studio dance as well as dance team. Studio dance, you know, I would go every night and I was the only one. I was kind of the bigger girl, the dance girls, you know, and, and uh, you see, you always see videos of girls dancing or ballerinas and they're all sticks and they're all skinny, you know, and that's partly because they dance all day, but, you know, you think, why am I not like that? You know, 
this is what I'm supposed to look like. This is what this awesome ballerina looks like, so that's what I should look like. So that had a negative effect. And, and then um, on dance team, you know, I, when I joined dance team, I was thinking that it was very, you know, going to be all supportive and so excited and stuff. But it's, being in a sport is hard, you know, it's very competitive. No matter what sport you're in, I feel like it's always competitive, even between your team members. And so that, you know, was hard as well to be on the team and like seeing all these girls and I'm like, well, she maybe she's better because she's skinnier. Maybe, you know, she has more friends on the team because she's prettier or she's nicer or funnier or meaner or whatever it is, you know, and you're always I feel like it caused me to analyze everything. I'm over analytical anyways, that's <laughs> one of my problems. So I feel like compared myself all the time to everybody I was around, you know, and I never had the upper hand, I was always like, you know, compare myself in a negative way, you know, definitely something you should not do, I do not recommend comparing yourself at all. So what kind of support did you have throughout your journey? Um, my sister was my biggest support, she was anorexic as well when she was in high school, so, you know, she would, I felt like I could talk to her about she understood, she understood what I was thinking, you know, my parents tried, but, you know, there's only so much you could understand. It's definitely a mental illness, so it helps to have somebody there that gets it, and she did, and she would, she would just let me talk to her on the phone, I cried on the phone, because she lived out in Virginia, so she wasn't there with me, but, um, she was a big support, my friends were a large support, um, actually the one of my counselors at Holmes Junior High, as well as my counselor here at Cedar Falls High School, all helped me yeah. throughout it. And um, yeah. friends and family are the big supporters. Um, so what kind of impact do you want to make with this group? What do you think is important? I would love to be, I would love to be somebody like how my sister was to me. You know, I want to be somebody that girls can look up to, that girls can be like, wow, you know, that's awesome. I, you know, I want to strive for great things like that. I want to reach my goals, and I love to give. I love to give advice to people. So that's what I hope to do in the leadership group. Is you know, be able to talk with other girls, see what they're going through, and give advice, and you know, kind of lead the way and being a girl in life. You know, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Say what you want to say